Right, this one's about staged injection. Um, basically, when you've got two injectors per cylinder, and you want to have one as a primary set and one as secondary, so you have uh, generally have one set low down in the uh, inlet manifold somewhere, and another set high up near the throttle uh, throttle uh, plate. Um, the idea being that um, the low down set work at low engine speeds and uh, high engine speeds the um, upper set slowly come into uh, as fuel starts being added by those and it's staged in um, generally used on motorbike engines where the engine speed is incredibly far, uh, incredibly high and the air speeds high so uh, this is an MS3 it's MS2 can also do this um, but MS3 can run it sequentially um, up to a four cylinder so you can run all eight injectors sequentially whereas an MS2 could only run it in batch fuel so it can run, fire all four um, cylinders at once using one set of injectors then stage the other set of injectors in on the other bank because um, there's only two injector banks um, Whereas, like I said, um, MS3 has eight injector outputs, so um, if you've got the MS3X card, so you can um, fire this, run this sequentially if you've got the right um, crank and cam signals and everything. Basically, um, you can have it so it switches on. Um, this is just how you want it to come in, RPM based, map based, throttle position based, duty cycle, or using the table. We'll just do what any, I mean, these are all the same in theory. So, if we do it on throttle position, select the uh, primary and the secondary injector sizes. You should know these uh, if you've added the injectors. But generally speaking, you may have a um, say 220s on the primary, and the secondaries may be they won't be that much, they'll roughly be a similar sort of value. But uh, yeah, leave them at 270. So, what the that you the ECU uses these two values to work out the ratio um, of fuel required so as um, it still follows the same uh, so the engine still gets the same amount of fuel uh, despite the um, so it still follows the VE table so it's just the ratio of the two so when it switches in it, if these are bigger if the secondaries are bigger so they'll say 500 for argument's sake much bigger um, the ECU will add less less pulse width to these secondaries because it knows it's going to flow more fuel uh, and it's just a ratio of the two so if they were both the same then they're both open the same amount if that makes sense and uh, this transition is whether or not you're going to um, uh, go f from one to the other uh, or so when it goes when if it was on when it when it um when the transition was over and it fully into uh, the secondaries uh, this primary would be switched off so all the fueling would be controlled by the secondaries or um in most cases the uh, transition is um maintained so you get a bit of fuel out of both of them both sets so if it's off you get both sets still working if it's on uh, it goes from primaries to secondaries the um, the outputs are um, if you've got an MS3X card and you run the four cylinder then you'd use that uh, you'd use um, the MS3X card uh, if you didn't have the MS3X card this is um, you'd only you could only use the V3 board so you've only got two outputs and basically this is saying um, this is saying if uh, if you want to alternate or um, simultaneously squirt the the, uh, the outputs as they change over so we're going to go on um, use MS3X because this is all mainly about MS3 um, so we're going to run this sequentially so I can show you it easier uh, on how the transition works, but it's the same in theory on the um, on the MS3. Um, we're just using a normal version three board on the MS2. So here, this this um, 
is basically how long you want it to um, the the transition to take from one to the other. So in ignition events, so um, hundred ignition events uh, that go from one to the other. And this is on the way back again, so as it goes back, reduction, so as it goes back to the uh, original one. And then this is in case you need to add a little bit of fuel uh, when the secondaries are on. You can add a little bit of fuel in there on the secondaries. Primary stage threshold, this is um, the value. So if you're in throttle position, this would be, I don't know, say 50% throttle. And the hysteresis would be, say, 2. So above 50%, this transition starts to take place above 50% throttle position. If that was map, that would be 50, um, 50 kPa. Uh, if it was duty cycle, that would be above 50% duty cycle. And um, this is the, the hysteresis is basically, um, as it comes below the 50, that would have to go to 48 before it switched off. And then you can have another parameter if you want. So if you want the duty and um, I don't know, throttle position or RPM, for instance, you could have two, one or the other, or one and the other. So it'd have to be one as well as the other before it's switched in. But I think most people would use what called table. So you switch to table, and basically this switches. Um, I've just Done a quick this ignore this generally you'd probably have zero in here and this would be a reasonable good guesstimate of a map but I've put these in here just so as I can illustrate it so uh, as our RPM increases um, we're gonna have 50 and then hundred percent so I'm just gonna add a couple of dials into um, my sc screen so as I can show you just make them rather large. Uh, outputs, pulse width one. Add another one. I'm just going to show you the how it does it. Between, we're going to choose one and five. Outputs one and output five, which is basically a four cylinder. One to four would be the first four cylinders. Five to eight would be your second uh, your second set of injectors. So these effectively would be the same um, cylinder. This one here would be the primary. And this one here would be the secondary. So as I as I increase engine speed, you can see this this is one's on. And this one's slowly coming on as it's as it creeps into this band here. Fifty percent. When we get to a hundred, they're both injecting the same amount of fuel because I've set both injector sizes the same. So if this one was higher that would be less fuel because it would know that there was more fuel coming out of those injectors so it would calculate the ratio between the two. This one would be slightly higher and that one would be slightly less. So um, and as you can see as it drops down again 50%-ish uh, the secondaries of uh, fuel come down and the primary fuel has gone up a little bit to compensate. And when we get back down to 100 you can see this has gone this is going up and this is coming down so just show you that again so I, I think I've set the fuel and the VE table to the same value all the way across on this row so the pulse width shouldn't in theory alter so um, so we've got 4.1 milliseconds of fuel all the way across here so as I bring the RPM up you'll see this one will drop as this one increases so you end up with the same amount of fuel going in Don't forget, you've got opening time on top of these. You've got one millisecond opening time, so um, that's why the values don't look right. But that's the opening time, and there you go. So you're actually ending up with one millisecond of opening time, 1.8 milliseconds of fuel on each. So, um, so that's how that works. And this is your table. You can set your table up for throttle position, or uh, probably throttle position, because it probably would be a, um, a throttle bodied in, uh, engine. 
for this sort of setup. So you'd have throttle position up here and uh, alpha N and engine speed down here. But like I say, you'd probably have, um, you know, these are probably zero across here because you're not going to add extra fuel at that sort of load. And MS2 is exactly the same. It's just you haven't got the function, you haven't got the uh, options of um, sequential mode. You've only got semi-sequential. Uh, you've only got batch fuel. 